Hello everyone and welcome to the basic part of network security. My name is Jens Schmier Pedersen, I'm from Aalborg University. In this part I will give you an, uh, knowledge of the common threads, which we were also looking at in the introductory part. I will try to provide you with knowledge of botnets, including the botnet lifecycle, botnet architectures, and something about how we can track, detect, and mitigate the botnets. And that is the main part of this, um, this basic part. And then also I will cover knowledge of the motivation and business models behind cybercrime. This course is organized so that there are uh, nine quite short lectures, around five minutes. And then after each lecture, there is a quiz with self-assessment. And then at the end of the whole basic part, there will be an additional quiz. So when we look at a botnet and what is a botnet, um, the easiest way is actually to see it in the figure, but I have included this slide as well, so you can go and read more about it if you, if you want it as a reminder. But if we look at the, um, the figure, what we can see is that we have a botmaster who has infected a number of um, zombies, which are here called bots, with a kind of specific um, botware or malware. And what he can do then is that he can actually control these machines and use them for different kind of malicious purposes. So that could be, among other things, email, uh, spam. Also use the computer for stealing information. That could be personal information, uh, credit card information. It could be having access to, for example, a webcam or a microphone. Um, or it could simply be to install a keylogger and monitor everything that is going on on the machine. And uh, finally, he can also use the bot as a part of, a, an, a, for example, a DDoS attack. So the machine can take part in, in DDoS attacks at a certain point in time. Uh, what is important to keep in mind is that while I show here a very simple architecture, in fact, it can be more complicated so that there is no direct communication between the bot master and each uh, zombie, which makes it a lot harder to take down the botnet and to, uh, to find the bot master eventually. It's, um, uh, it's also important to say that you can actually use the botnet for different things. So first, you might use it for stealing personal information. And when there is no more personal information of any value, then you can go to the next step and use it for spamming or DDoS attacking, with where there is a higher probabil probability that you will be caught at some point. But we will get back later on to, uh, to how that works. It's important also to say that the owners of zombies are often unaware of these kind of infections. Um, so they don't know that there is something running on their computer. Um, uh, a word on that about these infected computers is that the user of something might not notice that the computer is infected. And often these programs are made really good to remain stealth, so you don't see it. Um, uh, one way of seeing it could be that there can be network activity when it's not expected. There could be uh, very small amounts of traffic, so you cannot detect it. Or it can be large amounts of traffic, such as when you participate in a DDoS attack. It could also be increased CPU load when certain malicious activities are carried out. For example, if you use the, um, the zombie for, for calculating bitcoins or similar. Uh, and it could be increased network load when you have, for example, these DDoS attacks or distribution of spam. For now, please go to quiz number seven and then uh, see you here in a minute.